Hi, this is Paul from FinishYourSong.com and I want to finish off having a look at the plugins available for reamping by reminding ourselves that sometimes you don't have to look outside the box that you buy for what you want. This is the Cubase amp rack, VST amp rack. It's built into Cubase. It's free once you've paid for Cubase. And it offers you far more in the way of options and permutations than any of the three effects plugins we've looked at so far. Um, it's more on a par with guitar rig and that sort of thing, um, or even the pod farm from Line 6. The one thing I would say having used the Line 6 software for a number of years is it's great if you're into screaming 80s heavy metal but getting anything a bit more delicate out of it is something of a major achievement. But the VST amp rack offers you lots of permutations um, that you can use when you're recording or when you're processing. So let's have a quick tour um, and then I will play you the sound that I actually used for How Soon Can I Leave, which by now you're probably all thoroughly sick of the sound of. VST Amprac is actually very much a recreation of the signal chain that you would have if you were stood on a stage. You start with your effects pedals, you go into your amplifier, out of your amp into your cabinet, then you have your rack effects. You also have the ability to adjust the microphone position, which can have a huge impact on the ultimate sound, and then it offers you some other facilities as well. But for here, we've got the effects pedal selection, and you've got these little arrows, and when you click on them, you can add any one of these effects. So you have all the effects pedals that you could possibly want. Uh, overdrive, fuzz, reverb, different delays, all the usual things that you would want to put on the floor in front of you when you were actually using this. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to leave this alone. That's the EQ that they've set, a little bit of boost in the mid, a bit of cut, a lot of cut in the high band. Then you come into the amplifiers and you have a selection of various Marshalls and other makes, Fender Tweed, um, Blackface Deluxe and the British Custom 30 Watt, which is what's being used here, the classic AC30, if we dare say that. Then you go into the cabinets and again you've got the different tweeds. You can link your amp and cab choice or you can have different amps. In this case what we've got is a 4B12. You have to match up the texture of the um, amp grill to the graphic to see. If we just click that you'll see that it goes for the British Custom 2B12 but we'll go back onto the Diamond 4B12 because that's what we were using. And post effects, here we have again, you have a little arrow, you can add effects after the event. So you get to have an effects chain before you go into your amp and cab and then a group of effects as you come out. And in this case we are looping in on the amp, we're adding compressor, some EQ and some reverb. And you actually click on these to turn the pedals on and off, just like a virtual foot is stomping on them. One of the things I like about this is that, and you get this facility with the Line 6 software as well, you get the ability to blend between a dynamic and a condenser microphone, that's what the mix button is, and you also get to decide where you want to put it. Do you want to go on axis right up against the grill or do you want to stand off a bit and get some natural uh, room sound or do you want to go off axis 
do you want to just use condenser do you want to just use dynamic or as this was do you just want to use a blend of the two there's some you know you've got seven positions there and an infinite balance between those two so it's a lot to to give you in terms of altering your sound and then you've got your EQ again a final EQ going out they even provide you with a tuner as you saw there if I just hover over that it actually tells you where the frequency bands are and the amount of cut or boost that you're offering so here we've got no gain at 1500 Hertz we've got a 6 dB gain at 1000 Hertz again pushing some mid and you've got the overall level in fact the EQ is not engaged so and as you can see when you do engage it you get a very nice little graphic at the bottom that shows you what's going on we'll turn that back off so that's the VST amp rack it's built into Cubase and it's free well as I say you have to pay for Cubase but it comes along for the ride and this is what we get so if I just solo that and turn that off let's remind ourselves what we started out with we had this as a clean sound we had this as a distorted sound and if we go into this and I just solo that and re-enable that you can hear we take it That's still quite a clean sound, but when you blend it with the Les Paul, you get quite a nice combo sound. I did the same thing with a parallel track so if we just solo this you'll hear that's a, a Les Paul special type sound and if we just go to the clean version of that here we've got the same sort of thing it's a clean version of the distorted signal we just have a look on the inserts you'll see that we've got golden radar wonder who that could be what I'll do is I'll just punch that in as it plays and you can have a listen to how that adds to the sound then I'll play both sounds together <laughs> So, the VST amp rack offers you a tremendous potential for sculpting your sound. It all depends what you want to do. If you have a very specific sound, then something like the VST amp rack or guitar rig or the Line 6 pod farm, that's the place you want to go because that's going to give you far more options than you could feasibly want in order to sculpt your sound. If what you're looking for is, if you pardon the expression, a quick and dirty sound, then something like Easy Mix might be for you. If you want to modify the sound and you're more into adjusting the frequencies within the sound in a musical way that's designed for guitars, then the JJP and CLA plugins might be for you. It's all a question of what you want how much time you're going to put into your specific sounds and whether you think you're going to get a return in terms of satisfaction with the eventual outcome the amount of effort that you put into the individual plugin I hope that all makes sense 
and that it just hasn't got too waffly. So that's it for now for looking at guitar plugins. So until next time, you take care of yourselves and we'll finish by panning these boys to the left and these boys to the right and I'll see you soon.